Like I said, I'll give them, give them just a couple minutes and then we'll start kicking it off. I know everybody has been anxiously awaiting this information and everything is so much harder in COVID as y'all know. Just getting everything put together. We're all struggling through lots of changes and constant changes. So I'm sorry we are not face to face. It would be nice to be face to face again. We appreciate everything everyone's doing for our students in these challenging times and um, just know it's been difficult and that we're doing the best we can for our employees and our employees are doing the best they can for our students and we're going to get through all of this. Um, I do want to take a moment and just give a shout out to all of our veterans who've served our great nation. We appreciate you and celebrate you on Veterans Day today. So we're going to have a district presentation and then we're going to have uh, Aetna and then PEC uh, with our supplemental benefits. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Coach. Sorry about that. If you can self-mute yourself. I know Alex is trying to set everybody to mute. <laughs> So it doesn't disturb the presentation. We have um, the chat feature is available if you want to type, you know, a question in the chat. Holly Crenshaw will be monitoring the chat for me. And if we see a common question or confusion, she may chime in to have me clarify something. But for the most part, we'll answer all of the chat questions in an FAQ document on the website. So. Can we turn mine off or? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to Flower Bluff Benefits 2021. We're going to cover the health and the supplemental benefits in this meeting. Um, the first thing is that our plans haven't changed this year. We don't make changes to our providers. We're continuing with Aetna and Express Scripts. PEC is doing the enrollment and overseeing the supplemental benefits, which are the same as they were in the prior year. The thing that is changing is our plan year. Um, this year, we're going to do a short year, short year enrollment for eight months, and we're going to realign our plan year to our school year and our physical year. Um, with COVID-19, the carriers have offered us a renewal and kind of given us some flexibility to be able to do this. We were offered renewals at the same cost plus a discount um, for renewing. And so that was the best decision for the district to go with the renewal where we were. Um, so as part of that, we're changing that plan year and we'll have a re-enrollment in the summer for September 1st and then we'll be a September to August year going forward in 2021. Um, this will allow the district to make health care and compensation decisions at the same time to the best benefit of our employees. Uh, there will be a transition planning to hold our employees harmless who've met their deductible in the eight month period and we'll have some communication about that towards the end of the school year. And beginning September 21, like I said, your deductible will be a September to August. So elections you're making now are effective through August 2021. Um, it does give you an opportunity to change your elections sooner than you would have in a normal year. So the enrollment process for 2021 will be enrolling from December, from November 12th to the 24th. Due to COVID, we're 100% virtual. There won't be any on-site counselors. The uh, benefit phone line is the same as last year, the same process. You can call in and talk to a benefit counselor on the rep line. The hours are posted there. We'll have the flyer on the website and be circulating those times and numbers. Um, new this year, 
because we're on a continuing plan now, we are able to offer a self-serve where you can log in on the website and do your own enrollment completely. The instructions are in the benefits booklet posted on the website. Um, all employees must go through the open enrollment process. I get the question a lot. Oh, I'm on my husband's insurance. I don't take the insurance. Do I have to do this? And the answer is yes. You have a life insurance benefit that is provided by the district and you need to enroll and elect your uh, beneficiary. You need to decline our health insurance. Um, because we need that documentation due to all the regulations. I need the document that you declined it, that you don't want it. And um, if you don't go through enrollment, your selections will remain the same automatically with the exception that you will not have a flexible spending or an HSA because you have to, by IRS regulation rules, you have to actively enroll in those plans. So it's just best if everybody goes through the steps, you know, yes, no, maybe make their selections and sign off on it. Um, our health plan options for this year, what's new? Well, what isn't new is that we're a self-funded self -funded health plan. Uh, basically our pan plan pays for Aetna, and Express Scripts to administer our health plan. But the actual claims come out of the health fund of the district. So we, put, we drive and those claims drive the bill that we need to give y'all for a premium. So if we all work together to utilize our health care smartly, then we all win together. If we use ReadyMD and Minute Clinic instead of an urgent care, if you use an urgent care instead of an emergency room, if it's appropriate. Uh, utilize generic medications. Use the Express Script 90 days. If you seek out the lowest care possible for you, it reflects in the plan as well. So our goal as a plan has been to preserve our benefits and maintain our cost. Um, if we weren't self-funded, the option for us out there is to be part of the TRS insurance system, uh, which has been stripping benefits and has not been as beneficial as our plan has continued to be for our employees. So how we get to plan benefits and rates, they're driven by the actual performance of the insurance program, all those bills we write and the liabilities that are out there, the data from the past and current years analyzed by Gallagher, the professional team at Gallagher runs the scenarios to predict how the plan will perform and makes funding and plan change recommendations. Based on this data, the district implements plan design changes and sets the premiums. They're very complex calculations driven by the professionals and we are constantly seeking to balance our benefit versus our cost. So the plan benefit changes this year. The biggest change is we have eliminated the 1500 plan. Um, the, we have kept the 3000 saving choice, the 3000 broad network or low plan and the 4000 high deductible. Um, the other change that was made in the two 3000 plans is the net in network out of pocket has increased. It was 4000 and 8,000 at 6,000 and 12,000 for uh, employee and family. And the deductible did not increase, only the maximum out of pocket. And the broad plan and the narrow plan have an increase in the specialist copay and the emergency room copay. The high deductible plan, we have no changes to it. It continues to have, be a 4,000 high deductible. It doesn't have any copays for the emergency room or the doctor because the first 4,000 of medical care is paid by the employee and not the plan. So there's no plan changes to that one. So this is the premium slide for the current year on all three plans. And we do have across all three plans increases. Um, the board increased the district contribution to 440 from 430. Um, the plans have continued to run overall about 117% of the revenue side. And so the spend is outspending the 
premium. So we basically have to increase our revenue. And the premiums are based on Gallagher's uh, recommendations for the rate actions needed to keep our plan actuarial sa actuarially sound. Um, these rate schedules will be posted in addition to the PowerPoint on the website. I think we've gotten the benefits book up and a few of the flyers. We're flying them up there as fast as we can. I expect them to all be up there by tomorrow. So the open enrollment steps. I can say again, everyone has to go through it. Um, and you highly recommend as we're walking through this that you educate yourself. You visit the employee hub and look at the information, look at the plan options, uh, watch the Zoom recording and or watch it live, review your healthcare history and select the best plan for you. Then you can enroll by the self-enroll or by calling the benefit center and everyone needs to have it completed by D November 24th. Um, after you've enrolled, print your confirmation, review your plan selections. And then I can't stress enough the confirm in January. Print and review your pay stub in January where the deductions you thought you enrolled in taken out of your check was a deduction you thought you declined taken out of your check. Uh, notify benefits immediately if there's a problem. Um, it's a lot easier for us to check, fix an error in January than in June. And so uh, we strive to do the best we can in getting all of these elections done. It's done with data feeds and files. Um, so we just need some human verification so that we can correct anything that's unexpected. So what is your best option? Your best choice may not be your best friend Sue's best choice because everybody's healthcare needs are different and their spend is different. And so it's really important that you educate yourself. You have two types of cost to consider. Um, you have a routine day-to-day -day cost and these are costs that are just certain for the most part. You're going to pay your monthly premium if you want to continue to have healthcare every month. Um, you're going to pay your copay for your doctor's visit or if you're on a high deductible, you're going to pay for the doctor's visit and the same on prescriptions. You're going to pay a copay or the doctor's amount. And so those numbers are kind of fixed and easy to identify. Then there's the unexpected. With Obamacare HCA, wellness care is covered under any of the three plans. But if you don't feel well and you need to have some diagnostic tests run, those go to deductible on any of the plans. So you've got diagnostic cost being x-rays, lab work, MRI, your annual physical and your annual lab work is covered as wellness care across the board. On the unexpected, you had to go to the emergency room or you had a hospitalization. In all three plans, these unexpected types of costs will go to deductible first. So, the way you look at your healthcare cost is log into Aetna and look at your EOB and understand what your spend has been. There's, the tool is very effective. When you go in there, you can look at a summary of what you've paid on healthcare, how much you've paid towards your deductible. You can click on the EOB for an individual doctor's visit and it'll show you, you paid a copay of X and the plan paid the doctor X. Um, it's, it's good to see exactly how you're spending. And the same thing with the uh, Express Scripts, you can try, go on their website and see the tracking tool of your out-of-pocket expenses. So there's a, a formula called the MOOP, Maximum Out-of-Pocket. And this is just showing you your maximum out-of-pocket, basically if you had a catastrophic event, you'd be paying your premiums, you would pay your catastrophic expenses towards your deductible, and then you have a maximum out-of-pocket amount on top of that. So the maximum out-of-pocket on each of these plans is illustrated. And that's, again, based on if you had a hospitalization, if you had you know, a significant expense. Your regular expenditures, you can look back over your history and see, I went to the doctor five times, I, you know, had three scripts, this is, was my spending, and look towards how you, much you spent towards your deductible in the previous years. But this MOOP lets you see on that catastrophic 
zone what we uh, what you would be out of pocket. And I think we tend to make our health care decision based on a catastrophic event. You know, it's like, oh, I can't afford that deductible. Oh, I can't afford this. But when you look at it from a catastrophic standpoint, you're going to hit the you're going to go to deductible in any plan that we have. And so I would encourage you to look at your actual spending and make your decisions more closely on your actual spending. Um, you do have an option to go to the narrow network if you're in a broad network and it saves you premium dollars. The Aetna doctors on this plan, our plan pays less for the doctors. You have access to the Thomas Spann Clinic with a $10 copay. ReadyMD is on the narrow network plan at no copay and on the broad. The narrow network applies to the Corpus Christi area. If you're traveling outside of the area, the broad network applies. Um, if you go to San Antonio or Houston, you have access to the broad network. The biggest difference in the plans is the hospital access. The broad network includes SPAWN and HCA systems, as well as Driscoll Children's. The narrow network is the HCA, which is Bay Area Doctors Regional. It excludes um, SPAWN system and Driscoll Children's. These could be treated as in-network if the only facility in the area that could treat them. Um, you could go through a long process and it could be found to be in network, but you have to request a referral to a non-network hospital um, in order to get that pre-approved. In the case of an emergency, all hospitals are treated as in network. With the emergency rooms, if you have any medical emergency, any ER is in network. Um, emergency rooms aren't just at a hospital. Um, going to an emergency facility for a non-emergency will be paid by you towards your deductible. Um, if you use it for non-emergency care, there is not coverage. If you choose to go to a TLC for a convenience treatment of a common ailment, you'll be responsible for the bill. So we do wanna stress that we want employees to seek medical care as they needed, as needed. Um, if you need an emergency room, go to an emergency room. So the high deductible plan does offer you a potential of a health savings account. A health savings account is an opportunity to save money in a tax deferred account for future medical cost. Um, it has lower premiums than a traditional plan. In addition, the district will contribute 100 per month to your HSA. It allows you to save now and set aside money tax free for future cost. Um, the goal with the health savings account is to build it up to your deductible to provide you that protection from a catastrophic event. There's no limit of the amount of money you can roll forward year over year, only a limitation on the amount you can contribute each year. And your funds can be used for your dependents' health care cost. So the pros of a high deductible is clearly a lower premium coupled with a savings account that allows you to save for the future. Well care visits and immunizations are covered at 100%. Some maintenance medications are cover also covered at no cost. Um, the cons are all medical costs go apply to your deductible first. There's no co-pays for the doctor or for your prescriptions. ReadyMD will cost you $40. It can't be free in a high deductible account. Um, and you have a potential risk for a maximum, you know, out of pocket spending before you accumulate it in your health savings. But you have that same risk in all your plans if you would be hospitalized. Um, is a high deductible plan and an HSA right for you? Well, I can't say it enough. Self-education is vital prior to enrolling. Um, you want to review your past so you know what it would look like in the future. You also want to deposit your premium savings into your health savings account. If you're currently in the narrow or the broad plan, take the amount of savings in your premiums to go in the other plan and deposit it into the HSA. The HSA is your money. 
Um, if you would leave the district, that account goes with you. Um, you can carry that money in that account. There is no expiration. And so it gives you an ability to set aside for future medical cost. Um, the Aetna expense, the allowed expenses on your EOB from Aetna is a good estimation of what you would pay out of pocket. When you look at a claim on Aetna, it'll say that you went to the doctor and you paid 40, the doctor billed 1,000 and Aetna allowed 650. The 650 is what you would be paying in a high deductible plan. You do get the benefit of Aetna's um, negotiated rates with each of those providers. Um, you can look up on Aetna the cost for services. You can go on the website and say, I need an appendectomy. What's it going to cost? Um, Express Script, you can also look up on their site what medications would cost out of pocket or call and talk to uh, their service providers on that one as well. The health savings account gives you an opportunity to set aside money. You can deposit up to $2,400 in addition to the $1,200 the district will deposit. Um, the, phones get, the funds get loaded onto a debit card and can be used for current metal, medical expenses, but can accumulate indefinitely into the future. So those funds are deposited each month after the pay, check, pay period. We load the card, send the money up to Infinisource. So, and again, you can use it for your dependents' cost as well as yours. So could it be right for you? Generally a good option for young and single employees who are more likely to be healthy and not have coverage for spouses and dependents. Are you in relatively good health with low medical cost? You don't take many prescription drugs. Um, you'll have to pay the full cost of those medications until you meet the deductible. Um, can you afford to pay all health care expenses until you meet your deductible every year? Uh, can you afford to fund your health savings account? Are you comfortable shopping for care based on price as well as quality? Uh, when you're paying the first dollars, it's really important that you find out what an x-ray cost at the different facilities that are in network in Aetna uh, because you're going to write the check and it is a different price all over the city. Um, you'll not skip care because of the cost. I mean, it's important that you have your, your medical care and, and see your doctor. So we wouldn't want you skipping it because of cost. Um, you do not have young children, especially young children may be involved in sports and things that could have injuries that will be costly. A high deductible plan probably isn't right for you if you suffer from frequent or chronic health conditions or have family members who require frequent doctor visits. Um, you don't have any money set aside to cover medical costs. You take one or more costly prescription medications, you're maybe planning on being pregnant. Those are all things that are going to end up, you know, are going to be costly. Uh, one of the medications that, that people overlook when you look in your EOB, you may take a medication that is um, given at the doctor's office, an injection for a condition or an allergy or whatever. And so you go in and pay $40 and you're done and you go home. But you look at your EOB and the plan may be billed a significant amount of money for that medication. So you want to be armed with that information as you select a plan. With a high deductible health plan, all the money goes first to the deductible. You'll pay the first thousand of your in-network health care. Um, if you're faced with a medical situation, you need to be prepared to pay out of pocket. Wellness checkups are covered. That's the Affordable Care Act rules. Um, maintenance medications, are some of those are covered. Um, with no cost out of pocket. The plan requires you to be proactive. Um, it is a qualified plan under the Affordable Care Act and it does have access to the high, to the broad network, just like the, uh, not, it's not the narrow network. You have access to all Aetna providers. However, it, as any plan, it's very costly if you go out of network. So you wanna be sure to verify your providers. Um, so the difference between a flexible spending and a health savings account. Uh, many of you participated in the flexible spending for a lot of years. You, you know, you set aside the amount you think you're going to spend on medical co-pays and um, 
your glasses, maybe some extra dental money, and it pre-funds on the first day of the plan year onto your account, whatever your election is for the year, and you have the year to spend it. Um, we have a grace period of rollover, but you forfeit any unspent money after that point. The difference with the health savings account, you have to be enrolled in the high deductible. You can put up to 3,600 for an individual or 72 for a family. If you're over 55, you can fund an additional 1,000. These funds go in pre-tax, they're available as deposited, but there's no forfeitures and the balance rolls over years to year. And the account is yours and it's your money. If you get drug out of the city by a spouse and have to work somewhere else, I can't imagine anyone would want to leave the bluff, but uh, you take your balance with you. It is your money to use in the future. Um, it do, it's not tied to Flower Bluff at all. So one of the caveats, if you are looking at going from one of the broader, the narrow plan into the high deductible and you have a flex account due to IRS rules, you absolutely have to spend that account down to zero by December 31st to be eligible to have a health savings account. So you want to pull out your flex card and give them a call and see what your balance is and um, send some reimbursements or do some spending to spend it down. Okay. And I want to caution you on out of network is costly no matter what plan you pick on ours. It's costly to you and it's costly to the plan because we have negotiated rates in the plan in the network. Outside of the network, the bets are off. You pay what the doctor billed. And so you really want to pay attention that your doctor's on the plan. I'm often asked why we don't give a list of doctors, why we don't tell you where you can go. Um, 30 years ago, you could do that in healthcare. It was a published book and it didn't change. But in today's age, the doctor can decide he's done with Aetna and drop off the plan. And the plan can decide they're done with the doctor and kick them off the plan at any time. And so it is a fluid list. And so you do want to verify your doctor is in network. Um, always ask the question or look it up on Aetna to be sure. So the website information is still at the employee hub. The, um, we've changed the buttons a little bit. There is a button for 2021, which is the current year benefits that we're doing. Last year's benefit information is still available under a 1920 tab. We're not fully populated at this point. We're, we should be by the end of tomorrow. We're getting there slowly. We've had a few uh, glitches with the getting clearance out of legal departments of carriers and things. So we're, we're moving it as fast as we can. Um, we are going to look at all of the questions from the chat and will be answered in an FAQ document and posted on the website. So stay, stay tuned for that. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Express Scripts. I guess I'm a shout out to Holly and ask her if she sees any questions we need to clarify anything on at this point before we go into Express Scripts. I've been kind of keeping up with the questions. I think we're, we're pretty good so far. Okay, thanks, Holly. All right, well, Express Scripts is the same as it was in the prior, in the prior year. Um, we are putting the plan documents for each of the plans out there. This is what it looks like. This is the 3000 broad plan. I'll have all three out on the website for you to look at. Um, there is an FAQ we had implemented last year and had some communication about the 90 day supply um, and failing to fill the medications for a 90 day results in you paying more. So it's really beneficial for you to fill your 90 day. And obviously this is not a script for strep throat. This is a blood pressure medication or some medication that you take on a routine basis that you want to have a 90 day script filled and highly recommend the most cost effective lane for the employee is home delivery with express scripts. And I know that I've used it and talked to other employees that have used it and have been really satisfied with it. They reach out to you and say, we need to fill this script. I know in the past, I am definitely guilty of opening the pill bottle and going, oops, 
should have filled that. And with Express Scripts, they'll communicate with you that you're you're due to have this refilled. Are you ready for us to send it? You know, there there are communication options that are that are useful, and um, they compare with Express Scripts, Kyle and Nick, and and Kyle's out having a good time, and Nick is running around trying to find the pill because he forgot to call in. <laughs> so just to to encourage y'all to look at Express Scripts, I think they offer a very good service. Um, and you do want to check if you fill your prescriptions locally that it's a covered pharmacy. So, and I think Express Scripts also reaches out to you when you fill too often on the lower and, and warn you that your cost is going up and you are overpaying. A lot of maintenance medications, if you will log on in Express Scripts and fill them in Express Scripts, are, end up with no cost to you. So if we don't have any questions on Express Scripts, I am going to stop my screen share and we are going to have Olga with Aetna come in. And she'll share hers. Can everybody see my screen? All right. My name is Olga Robledo and I am the account executive for Flower Bluff ISD. And um, it's good to be talking to Corpus Christi people because this Corpus Christi is my hometown. So glad to be speaking with you all today. I am gonna cover uh, some information on your Aetna medical plans and um, hopefully answer any questions that you might have. So highlighting again, what uh, Louise spoke about is you now have three plans. Uh, they, we did away with the uh, 1500 broad plan. So you have the savings choice, 3000 narrow plan. We can't see your screen. We can't see you. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, we can't see your screen. Click on the top right and select speaker view and you should be able to see her. Let's see. I see her, but am, are we supposed to be looking at some sort of document? Right. On yes, the bottom bar are. of the Zoom is your share screen. Okay. Hover I your mouse that. down at the bottom and yep. you should see a share screen button. There it goes. Okay. Sorry about that. Now we're starting to see your screen. All right. <laughs> okay. All right, let's start over. <laughs> so you now have three plans, the savings choice 3000 narrow plan, which again, the narrow plan is going to narrow your network in Corpus Christi, but outside of Corpus Christi, you have access to, uh, the broad plan so as long as it's not within the corpus christi area and louise did mention that you know although it doesn't cover uh when a hospital's not in the network is driscoll children's hospital there's a possibility that you could um ask for what we call a um a network deficiency if you had a situation however if you know that you have a child that has uh, medical complications and, and, and seeks treatment with a specialist at Driscoll Hospital, then this is not a plan that you wanna be on. Um, you want to be able to have access to, to Driscoll uh, with ease. Uh, then you have the Choice POS2 3000 low plan, and then the Choice POS2 high deductible health plan. Mm -hmm. Those are broad networks. The only difference is in the way that the plan uh, design um, is outlined. So I went ahead and uh, placed a copy of your plans up on our screen here. And again, uh, Louise did highlight the changes for the uh, 3000 uh, broad plan and uh, the narrow plan. And that being that your uh, in-network out-of-pocket maximum went to 4,000 
from 4,000 per individual to 6,000 per individual. And then your specialist office visit increase from 40 to $50 on both those plans. Um, and then your ER um, copay went from 250 to 500. So as we go through this, um, I'm gonna go over all the different boxes. So your deductible on your in-network is 3000 and, and on your out-of-network on the broad plan is nine and the same in the narrow plan. Um, again, the big difference being the network. Your physician's office visits are similar. Um, pretty much everything is the same, but I would, I would stress that you know, if you are going to the emergency room, you want to make sure that it is for an emergent visit, not for a non-emergent visit, or it will not be covered. Um, urgent cares are a $75 copay. You know, a lot of the urgent cares can do uh, provide stitches. Um, if you break your arm, they're able to provide cast in. A lot of people think that they need to go to the emergency room for those types of services. Be aware when you are looking for an urgent care, there's a lot of standalone emergency rooms that look like urgent cares. If the word urgent care or walk-in clinic is not on the sign, chances are if you see emergency room on that sign, it is a standalone emergency room. And you can be balanced billed, meaning that we may pay what is reasonable and customary for an emergency room, but if they don't like what we're paying, then they can come back and charge you the difference. So, you know, I, I, you want to avoid those uh, standalone emergency rooms as much as possible. Then you also have your high deductible health plan. And of course your um, deductible comes first with your high deductible health plan. And, um, you know, I always look at the plan that I, uh, that I would choose kind of like auto insurance. A lot of people think, well, I want the best plan. And so I'm willing to pay whatever it costs me. But if you think about it, when you buy auto insurance, am I, are you gonna take the 250 deductible if you have an accident or a thousand dollar deductible? And the 250 deductible might cost a thousand dollars a month and the thousand dollar deductible might cost $500 a month. And that's money you're given to the insurance company versus keeping it in your pocket in case you do have an accident. Most of us don't have an accident every year. So unless you're a really, really bad driver, you know, save that money, make it yours. So same thing with health insurance. Look at, you know, are you healthy? Do you rarely go to the doctor? You know, keep some of that money that way, maybe you can enroll the health, uh, high deductible health plan and you're able to pay that deductible should an emergency occur. So those are always things you want to evaluate uh, when you're looking at these health plans. Know that when you go to uh, the hospital um, and you are having surgery, as long as the, the physician and the hospital are in network, your um, radiologist and your anesthesiologist will be treated as if they are in network. Most radiologists and anesthesiologists don't belong in any network. They're all out of network because they don't, they don't have to. So, you know, you're, they don't, you don't have a choice when you go in for a surgery. You're just kind of given whoever is available to provide those services for you. So just know that when the bill comes in, um, check your, check your uh, bill against the explanation of benefits on the uh, Aetna.com site. And we'll talk a little bit about how that works because sometimes the doctor's offices do make mistakes and they'll try to, you know, balance bill you or, or, or perhaps, um, you know, when a claim comes into Aetna, if we don't have a hospital bill showing that you were in the hospital, we don't know. And so sometimes that claim might be denied and then you just need to call and say, hey, I, I had a surgery, I was in the hospital, 
I didn't have a choice uh, uh, as to who was going to be my anesthesiologist or my radiologist, and that bill will be reprocessed. So it's real important, like we said, that you educate yourself, look at your claims, and you know, get a, a good understanding of what you're looking for, because you know, carriers make mistakes as well as doctor's offices. So it's always good to double check everybody. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about the Savings Choice Narrow Network Plan. And uh, like Louise highlighted, it, these are the uh, hospitals that fall within that network. And again, you, you can see that uh, Spawn is not in that network. N neither is uh, Driscoll Children's Hospital. So think about you know, what hospitals are in this network when you do make a choice for your care. Um, you have the Thomas Spann Clinic, you have a $10 copay on the two plans, but the uh, high deductible health plans, so you can always go to the Thomas Spann Clinic, save yourself some money. Uh, these are, um, you know, doctors that have negotiated rates with uh, Aetna and the district to provide quality service at a quality price to you. And then you've got Ready MD. This is great because it's 24 seven care. Um, you know, a lot of parents during the holidays, your kids might get sick. Sometimes you might have a lot of little ones sick at the same time and what a hassle to put them in the car and take them to the doctor's office. So take advantage of your Ready MD um, teledoc or telus tele-services type of visits. They, they can even write prescriptions for you. It's just very convenient. I would register before you get sick because when you're feeling yucky, that's the last thing you wanna do. So if there was any registration required and you need to enter your insurance information, whatever you have to do, I would, all, I would always set that up prior to you actually needing to use that service. CVS Minute Clinics, Corpus has a couple of CVS Minute Clinics available to you inside our CVS stores. Um, there is no cost to you for going to a CVS Minute, minute Clinic. It's convenient. Uh, you can go in as on a walk-in basis. If they have an appointment, you can get in or you can make an appointment online to see a, a doctor or a nurse practitioner at a Minute Clinic. Oh, good. That is only on the traditional plans. The high deductible plan doesn't have that free benefit, correct? Yes. And, and Louise, let me double check that because when I looked today on the, the high deductible health plan, I did see that it was covered on the high deductible health plan. Okay. I believe it, it is available, but mm -hmm. I will get back with you on that. Um. So there's a broad range of services they offer. Um, and again, you know, with CVS and Aetna partnering, there's a lot of data that we can share. And so when you go to the Minute Clinic, they have access to uh, medical information that they can share with you, or if, if they feel like you, you know, they see that you you might be a diabetic and you haven't uh, made an appointment with uh, like you should and are not seeing a doctor regularly, you know, they might advise you on what would be great for you to do to control, uh, to have disease management. Your Aetna Health app. This is really, really a useful tool. I love it because my college kids are on my plan and they never have their card. And so they can automatically bring up their ID card on your app. Um, you can look at your claims. It's just fast and easy. You always, before you pay a doctor bill, I would always go out and check um, your, the bill against what Aetna thinks you should pay before you pay. Because sometimes things cross in the mail and you don't want to pay something that you don't owe. So always go in and check and see what your responsibility is. 
The other great thing to remember about our Aetna.com uh, mobile app and um, web app is you can shop for care. And I am talking significant differences. So let's say you need an MRI of some sort. You can go on there and put in the exact type of MRI that you need for, you know, within however many miles of your home. And it will bring up a list of providers with an estimated cost. And there is a big difference. Um, you know, just a little bit of background. I'm a former benefits manager uh, for a city and school districts. And we would see one provider be $500 from an, for an MRI. And then you might see another provider be $2,500. So it's a savings to the district and it's a savings to you as to what's coming out of your pocket. And people will say, well, why, why is there such a discrepancy? I mean, is one better than the other? And the answer is no, it's just that for a particular procedure or um, lab or radiology uh, type of test, we have different negotiations with the different providers. And so a contract that we might have one, with one provider for a particular service may differ than another provider. So shop your healthcare and save money. And then you can also, uh, you know, look up, uh, there's just things on wellness as well on your uh, app that you can uh, look at and educate yourself on. And then here's just more information on it. Now, the dental plans, you have uh, a two dental PPO plans, a high and a low, and PPO plans are great because you don't need a referral of any sort to go to a specialist should you need one. Um, you do have in and out of network providers. Again, when you go out of network, that's more money that you're going to have to pay out of your pocket as well as money that the district will have to pay. So save money for you and save money for the district and try to stay in network. Again, dentist, dental, uh, dentist can be looked up on our Aetna.com uh, app as well as our website. Um, by using an in-network provider, it's you don't have claims to file versus when you use an out of network provider, you're usually going to be responsible for filing that claim. And, you know, it, it's, it's not fun to fill out claim paperwork. So uh, let them do it for you stay in network. Uh, there are annual and lifetime maximums that apply. Um, and you have a $50 deductible to meet. Uh, and and some coinsurance on your PPO plans. Uh, the difference between the two is you can see the percentage that uh, the school district would pay toward uh, the basic services versus uh, on the low plan versus what's on the high plan. So the percentage that's covered is the main difference between the two plans. And then again, your orthodontic maximum. And so the orthodontia is covered only for children. Um, and there's a maximum of $1,000 that 50% uh, up to $1,000 that the plan would pay. And that's it. If you all have any questions, you know, uh, just let Louise know and um, I'll be happy to get back in touch with you. Okay, we have Brian Inglis going to give us the supplemental benefits presentation and he shared his screen and I'll turn it over to him. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I know it's the end of the day and it's Veterans Day, so we're going to go over the remaining benefits that are offered uh, through the district. Um, as Louise talked about, um, 
the health savings account and flexible spending accounts are the first ones we're going to talk about. So the health savings account is uh, available and uh, you can contribute pre-tax dollars into your health savings account. As the money comes into your account, uh, you can use those for qualified expenses. It's much different than the FSA where the money is front loaded. So just be cautious of utilizing the health savings account in that method. There's two different limits. So if you have individual coverage, uh, you have $3,600 that you can contribute in 2000 uh, next year and 7,200 if you have family coverage. If you happen to be over the age of 55, you can contribute an additional $1,000. If uh, you are enrolled in the HD 4,000 plan, the district will put in $100 per month into your account. This does not have a use it or lose it provision, so you could take it with you if you ever happen to leave the district, and it accumulates year over year. In the event that you're balancing your HSA account with Infinisource, exceeds $1,000, you have the option to put it into the investment portion of your HSA, and that will grow tax-free. Uh, as Luis talked about earlier in the presentation, uh, this is a good account if you take advantage of it uh, and offset any type of uh, front-end expenses. Your medical flexible spending account, uh, it will be shortened this year. So typically, you get the full 12 months but this year, the, the maximum from January 1st through August 31st is $1,833 that you could put in. The funds would be available the first day of January, and then you repay the account throughout the year. You can use that for medical, dental, vision, prescription expenses. If you happen to be currently on the FSA this year, and you transition to the High deductible 4,000 plan. You have to use all your funds before the end of the calendar year before contributing to the health savings account with the new plan year. If you want to take advantage of the dependent flexible spending account, that puts money aside to pay for daycare expenses for children or adult daycare expenses or summer camps. This works like your HSA, the money is deposited into the account and then you reimburse yourself. So putting money into the dependent FSA account, make sure you have enough to cover that first month of expense. The best example is if you start contributing in January to your dependent FSA, you're gonna have to go and pay your daycare facility. Luis is going to take your contribution out of your paycheck and then you're gonna to have to submit a receipt to get reimbursed for those expenses. The vision plan is provided by Davis Vision, and there's two options. Uh, the first plan is the vision 120, 145. Those numbers may be foreign to you, but I'm gonna take a deep dive into those. So the vision plan that we're looking at here, the I exam copay is $10. If you happen to need to get lenses, your copay is $20. And by lenses, that's either contacts or lenses that go in your frames. You get the option of picking either frames or contacts and you set your anniversary. So once you've got uh, your last pair of contacts for classes last year, you have to wait one full year before you can get a new set of contacts or frames. The allowance is $120 for frames and $145 for contacts. You can see the premium here. It's a little bit different than other products where uh, it's not a four tier, it's a three tier premium contribution for employee, employee plus one. So that could be you and a spouse or you and one of your children, or if you need to cover two or more dependents, you have the family right. The next plan is what I would consider a higher plan. You're going to pay more premium, but you're going to have less front dollar expense. So when you go and get your eye exam, you don't have a copay. If you get contacts or glasses, you only have a $5 copay. Your frame allowance goes up to $150. In contacts, you get to use up to $200. 
so if you're looking more for the designer frames, this may be the better option for you. Anything additional costs on top of the frames or contacts on both planes, you get additional percent off any type of coverage. So with Davis Vision, uh, they have some unique features with them. So mobile friendly website, much like Aetna, you can navigate through uh, your plan information, locate providers, print out ID cards, get a call center support number directly to Davis Vision. On the next page, I, I find this being one of the best features of the Davis Vision plan. If you happen to break your glasses, I got a five and three year old at home. My wife's glasses gets broken once a year, not by her, but by one of the kids. We go in, they fix them uh, once per year with the warranty. If you're the type of person that needs a second pair of glasses, uh, you get a discount when utilizing VisionWorks. Then you get additional benefits on hearing aids, batteries for hearing aids. If you're thinking about transitioning to LASIK, you do get a free consultation and a potential discount. The next plan offered is the employer paid term life insurance, and that's provided by Hartford. So all employees of the district get $20,000 in term life and additional $20,000 in accidental death and disbarment. As Luis mentioned, you have to go through the enrollment system, make sure all your primary and contingent beneficiaries are up to date and designate who you would like to give. You can split that in different percentages for the employer paid. And if you happen to take any additional life insurance, you can designate other beneficiaries if you do so. If you happen to die in an accident, the plan pays $40,000 death benefit. If you die from a sickness, it pays 20,000. The additional life insurance not sponsored by the district that you would pay for is a voluntary term life in A, B, and D. If you're a new hire, you have the ability to get the plan under a guaranteed issue, and you can buy up to $150,000. If you did not have the plan last year, you may be subject to evidence of insurability. If you want to extend coverage to your spouse or children, you have to buy the plan for yourself. If you were buying for your spouse, you cannot exceed 50% of the employee's benefit. And all children are covered at one cost and they would get $10,000 in life insurance. So one same price if you have one or six children. In the event that you wanted to take this with you, the Hartford has the ability to convert the policy at time of separation. This plan does double indemnify itself. So if you do die in an accident, it does pay double the face value. The rate changes every time you turn a five or a zero. So if you're in one of those years, it's the age as of January 1st. The other plan provided by the Hartford is long-term disability insurance. Um, many people in the marketplace understand this as the educator disability plan because it's a merger of short and long-term disability plans, you get to pick the duration. It pays a flat monthly benefit, uh, and it protects your most important resource, your paycheck. So uh, the district has a, a, done a great job in providing some very deep medical coverage. This protects if you do, if you're out after an accident or sickness and or pregnancy. How the plan works is you can purchase in $100 increments, all the way up to 66 and two thirds of your monthly earnings from $200 to $7,500 in coverage. So if you happen to get a new uh, job title and maybe your salary is increased, make sure you're looking at it in the benefit system or with an enroller to increase it to the max benefit. The option it is guaranteed issue, so there is no medical questions asked, but there is a pre-existing condition. So the big question that always comes on is, if I come onto the plane January 1st and I am pregnant currently, the plan would not play. So you definitely want to buy this pre-family planning for the employees that are trying to have children. 
This is all paid for by the employee and will assist you after an accident or sickness that puts you out. The wait out periods. There is six different wait out periods. The most expensive wait out period gets you your disability income the quickest. That's after seven days after accident, sickness, or hospital confinement due to a pregnancy. And there's a 14 day, a 30, a 60, a 90, and 180 day wait out period. The 7-7 plan is more expensive than the 180-day plan. When navigating through the system, it shows you how you can switch the weight out plans or potentially adjust your monthly benefit. So if you're on a budget constraint, maybe you don't need 66 and two thirds of your benefit, but you do know that you're gonna need it after 30 days, you can reduce it to 50% of your annual salary paid after 30 days. As we talked about with pre-existing conditions, you have to be treatment free for six consecutive months before the date the plan begins in January. So if you're taking like a blood pressure medication and you happen to have a heart attack or stroke, that means you're actively taking treatment for that condition. And if it put you out in the first 12 months, this benefit would not pay you if you're new to the plan this year. If you currently have the plan, no pre-existing conditions to avoid. When taking advantage of any of the Hartford products, there's additional services provided to you. So the Benefits Hub and the Benefit Guide goes into deep detail about funeral planning, beneficiary assist, state guidance, travel assistance, health champion. So make sure to look through the guide, look through the website, and take advantage of all those value-added benefits as well. So as of last year, um, many people may be, were participating in a identity theft protection. It was provided by Info Armor. All state who has a few other of your benefits has taken over for Info Armor. Same plan design, same price. This protects you in the event of any type of uh, data breach or credit, in credit threat. It monitors your TransUnion credit score and report, sends you notification if someone happens to apply for a credit card or anything of that sort. It is iPhone and tablet friendly, so for Apple and Android. And it also provides you a indemnity policy of $1 million in the event of a fraud. Definitely take a good look into that program as this year has been a little bit challenging. Advanced tools, so it gives you who's searching the black web, helps control your identity and financial uh, needs where they're protected out in the dark web. The credit monitoring allows you to track your credit score for increases, decreases, new inquiries. It will also help you with credit disputes. Customer care is available 365 days a year through Allstate and the numbers listed in your benefit guide. Additional benefits that protect your out-of-pocket exposure related to your medical plan. As you know, you have the plans that have a exposure with your medical offering. So the plans that kind of come in, they're unique in each scenario. You may take one and not the other. Depends on what your family needs are. So the first one is provided by Chubb and it's the accident plan. This pays you directly in the event that you have any type of accident, broken bone, burns, comas, cuts. The money is paid directly to you to help offset any type of out-of-pocket exposure. Bigger the accident, bigger the payout. It also has additional accidental death and dismemberment associated with the policy. And if you're playing in a benign uh, sport, the benefit increases by 25%. Something I always remind all employees of, maybe you're only taking the employee-only medical plan for yourself and your spouse and children on your spouse's plan. You could purchase the accident plan here for the whole family. The benefits are paid directly to you. Maybe the spouse's employer doesn't have these benefits available, so it does not have to align with your medical coverage. You can take this with you if you ever leave the company and the price stays the same. 
The next product provided by Chubb is the permanent life insurance. It also has a long-term care benefit to it. And this price stays the same. As we talked about with the Hartford plan, that price goes up every time you turn a five or a zero. This plan, the price stays the same. You take it with you if you ever leave the district. You can purchase it for yourself, your spouse, and your children. What's unique about this plan is it gives you a living benefit. So if you ever end up in a long-term care facility, it pays 4% per month up to 25 months after you cannot do two out of the six activities of daily living and you end up in the skilled nursing facility, adult daycare center. For example, if you had a $100,000 death benefit and you ended up in a long-term care facility, this would pay four thousand dollars a month say if you were in there for 10 months that would have a forty thousand dollar benefit paid to you and if you happen to pass away after being in the long-term care facility it does have a restoration of your death benefit or restore at least up to 50 percent of your long-term care benefit at date of death these are unique in rates because they are on single year age bands and depending on your tobacco status. So get with the benefit counselor or as you navigate through the benefit system, plug in the appropriate responses to get the uh, correct premiums for you. Other benefits provided to you by Allstate. The first plan is the critical illness plan. So critical illness plan, has been around for several years, now provided by Allstate here. Allstate shares some very important statistics. Every 40 seconds, someone suffers a heart attack, and someone else suffers a stroke nationally. So they provide critical illness coverage to you. Uh, so in the event that you had a heart attack, stroke, end-stage renal failure, major, major organ transplant, coronary artery bypass surgery, it's going to pay a lump sum directly to you. If you happen to get diagnosed with cancer, it would pay you if it's invasive cancer. And the unique benefit of this is if you happen to have additional critical illness, maybe you have a heart attack this year and a stroke next year, the benefit would pay you in that event. If you have a different diagnosis of cancer, it would pay you as well. Additional benefits outside of the major ones described on the previous slide, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, brain tumors, comas, loss of hearing, blindness, and paralysis. This benefit gives you the opportunity to return some of the premium that you're paying to Allstate for the critical illness coverage by having a wellness benefit. So wellness is covered at 100%. So if you go get a mammogram, pap smear, a blood test, colonoscopy, chest x-ray, it's going to pay you directly back to help offset that. So it could be no cost with your medical plan. Also, it gives you money back if you're participating, if you purchase for you, your spouse, and your children. Just like the Chubb plans, you can take it with you if you ever leave the district and the price stays the same. This is age band, so this is something that you want to definitely consider purchasing at a younger age because once you hit the next age band, the price is then offered and locked in at that time. It is a guaranteed issue. It does have a pre-existing condition limitation. Anything that you've been treated for in the last 12 months would not be covered in the first 12 months. You can cover dependents, and they would receive 50% of your benefit amount. Also, indemnity plan is also provided by Allstate. This shows the average hospital cost per day and the average cost of a three-day hospital stay. So with deductibles under the PPO plan or the high deductible plan, this will help offset any type of out-of-pocket exposures. So it pays a first-day hospital confinement benefit and a daily benefit for every day after that if you're hospitalized. If you happen to go into the ICU, it doubles their benefit. This is something you strongly want to consider before uh, becoming pregnant 
if you purchase it before you are pregnant and you're confined at the hospital, does pay for the mother to stay in there, help offsetting that out-of-pocket exposure as well. But if you're hospitalized for any other type of accident or sickness, the benefits are paid directly to you. The price stays the same. You can take it with you if you happen to leave the district as well. As we talked about pre-existing conditions, anything treated in the last 12 months won't be covered for the first 12 months. And the option to cover dependents, this coverage does not have to match up with your medical election. So as we talked about earlier, you could take employee only coverage for medical and family coverage in the hospital plan. The last benefit is the cancer plan. We did talk about how the critical illness does have a cancer benefit, but the cancer plan here, this is a standalone cancer benefit uh, where it carves out all the other heart attack strokes related to the critical illness, and it pays a little bit more for the scheduled benefits. It pays for every day that you're in the hospital at the care facility. It also pays for mileage, hotel stays, maybe if you have to go to MD Anderson in Houston. You have to bring a family member with you. It's going to pay for mileage, lodging as well. It pays initial diagnosis after uh, you're confined to the hospital. If you need a second opinion if you need surgery related to your cancer treatment, blood transfusions. This is a great product for you. The price stays the same, and you can take it with you if you ever leave the district as well. Just like the critical illness benefit, this does give you back some of your premium with a wellness benefit. And it talks about the other additional benefits related to the cancer plan. This plan, you could cover you, your spouse, and your children as well. So outside of the uh, traditional cancer benefit, it covers 29 other specified diseases that are listed in the benefit guide in your plan disclosures. Uh, on the benefit hub. So that's the end of uh, the supplemental benefits. I'm going to bring it back to Louise and we can definitely open it up to any questions. Okay. Um, appreciate everyone's time. I know it's been, been a bit long, but um, Holly, I think, has done a good job of keeping up with the chat. And anything that we haven't answered, we'll answer in an FAQ and we'll reach out to the carriers to get clarification and get accurate information in there. So thank you all for your time. I will uh, get that posted just as quickly as we can. And thanks for all you do for the Kids of Flower Bluff.